Mountain Sun. Welcome back to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast, guys. I am your host, the friendly neighborhood Dilbot. With me is the always mighty, the always immortal Iron Ryan. Uh, today, our book of the week, which is probably going to be our last book of the week for a bit. We're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back hard again. Um, Blue and Green. Uh, written by Ron V, artist Anon RK. Uh, color artist is uh, John Pearson. Uh, Didier Bidikar, who I freaking love, who's like awesome. Yeah, he, doing... He's lettering so much. Dude. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Tom Muller, designer and uh, production artist is Ryan Brewer, uh, published by Image Comics. Yeah, let's just dive into it. Like, this is, uh, this is the first uh, creator owned uh, comic that I've read for Ron V. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no you read Graffiti's Wall. Graffiti's Wall. Graffiti's Wall. So, yeah. Graffiti's Wall. And this completely like, different. Completely different. It's like night and day. Yeah, completely different. And like I had no I, no idea going into this that this was like horror. Oh, like, you didn't? I, I, no, at all. Uh, oh, no, I, someone just said, "Oh, it's about this guy trying to find his uh, his lineage and jazz roots." So I'm like, "Oh, mm-hmm. okay." You know, that's a very deceiving fucking it's a elevator. Very, very mean, deceiving elevator pitch. It is. The horror, it's not like it's not like super prevalent in here, yeah. but it does have a factor. And like, even though I knew it, it's still it was still really jarring when I saw the fucking like that the pale demon, man. Like, oh yeah, not the pale man. The pale man was like, okay, is it that, that could have just been like a really oh. creepy fucking dude, or even like his perception of this dude who he feels is somewhat like doing a deal with the devil, but not yeah. necessarily is the devil. Yeah. So I, I could have accepted that. But the fucking, like, when you turn that worm creature and, like, you just see, like, fucking all the tentacles, I was like, it was a little jarring yeah. to me. The art in um, this is fantastic. Not yeah, arcade, definitely, is, uh... it definitely has some more, uh, like, Bill Sienkiewicz uh, influences mm-hmm. in this, as opposed to how he drew in Graffiti's Wall. Yeah. Like, the styles are, like, like not just the, the type of book, but, like, the styles, art style is, like, night and day, too. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, like, I, that... would, I wouldn't have said it was the same artist. If you would have told me, I'm like, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not even close. That's amazing. But that's that, that's amazing, though. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That, you, that someone can do that. It's like, you know, when you look at a J. Scott Campbell picture, you know it's J. Scott Campbell. When you look at Jim Lee, you know it's Jim Lee. When you look at... Any any recognizable artists nowadays? You like you can easily like, especially comic fans, right? Oh, that's Bill Sienkiewicz. Like, yeah. Even without knowing, even without knowing, like we just like, oh, that, like, we know that is right. So like the fact that the Graffiti's Wall and this is like so complete. Like, we're talking about we go from cartoon doodles to like actual friggin' painted panels. That's that in itself is phenomenal. Yeah, like so, hyper detailed yeah. in Graffiti's Wall, like just like. I mean, yeah, it's it's it is really crazy to think that, and I don't think there was that many years in between. So he's obviously just emulating a different style, and he's probably like, maybe he's kind of like a chameleon where he can just adapt and do different styles based on the project he's doing, and that's that's something else. Like that's a testament to his like artistic prowess and like the, to be able to do something so drastically different. It's not like this is an evolution of Graffiti's Wall. And that style. This yeah. is just a completely different approach. So the, uh, you know, we're talking about the art, but the story, you, you said it, right? It's, it's this, you know, down on his luck. He fucking, he had this talent. He was a jazz musician. Now he's fucking teaching on the weekends. And even his student, like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be like some jazz musician that just ends up Teach teaching you, classes. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I was like. I was like, dude, you're throwing shade at him. As at the he's... person you just asked the question to, you yeah, fucking like, shithead. So, you know, this, this sto- like, I liked that aspect, and which is why I wanted to read it with you, too. I thought you knew about the horror element um, before we decided to read it. I found out because... Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but, like, going into it, like, as I read it, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I know, I felt, yeah, I felt a little... I, I mean, even knowing, I was like... I, I, I where, I, I kind of was looking for it, too. I'm like, where's the fucking, like, when's this going to get to where the horror stuff starts happening? Because it doesn't yeah. really, like, go in very quick. And the mm-hmm. only reason I knew about it was because of Nick and uh, Mario and Kevin reading the book, like, a couple months ago. Or maybe, maybe, oh, okay. it that long. maybe it was about a month yeah. and a half ago. They did an episode. And I haven't listened to their thoughts because I knew we were going to read it. I didn't want it to influence me. Yeah. Um, but, like, even between the three of them, 
they had mixed opinions on the book. So mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I, I got to read this myself. And I love music. I like jazz. So I'm like, I'll fucking read it no matter what you guys say. He's a great yeah. writer. I definitely think this is, the writing is very strong in here. I can kind of see why Mario's feelings were that he wishes it was just a little bit longer. Yeah. I didn't even realize it ended. As I like, I finished it. I put it down. I went. I, I got. I went to the bathroom real quick. And I'm like, did did I really just finish the book? Yeah. So I went back. I fucking. I he, read like read the pages again. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, so it just ends. Yeah. Just, so I so I read it digitally, right? It was. It said 170 something pages. So it was like 175, right? And I got to page 140. That's what I meant to say. And then it ended, and I was like, wait, I, there. This is it. You're right. It, it, it felt short. This is kind of like a situation where uh, kind of like Euthanauts, right? Yeah. That one more issue could have pushed it over the edge to being something awesome, right? Like, yeah. I felt I felt like, you know, although now the, the metaphor itself, right, for a musician, like I, this, this is something that fucking hit me. This is what resonated with me, like uh, the whole the whole metaphor with the, with the musician and what you need to do to achieve greatness and what you have to give up. Yeah. Like, it's the craziest thing. This is dope because, like, you know, ruined relationships, ruined, ruined, ruined uh, uh, family. You know what I mean? Being a musician and being great and being something like transcendent, like you can only, I can, I can only imagine what it's like to like. I mean, being that, an like, artist too. Yeah, like, being, being really, artist you could. I mean, you could like, you could apply this to like anything. Just yeah. being successful and going after your your dreams or whatever. Like you do, you have to sacrifice. I mean, I, this isn't the same on the same level, but like I give up a lot of my time. And that's why, like, I started waking yeah. up earlier because, like, mm -hmm. I was doing this kind of shit, the YouTube and all that stuff, or writing, and like, so I go away with my headphones on, and I'm like, but my family's still here. Like, they're still living. They still need me, too, you know? But, like, mm. when you're going after your goals or your dreams, you have to sacrifice a lot of stuff that is hard to sacrifice. It's not necessarily that easy. Yeah, you could sacrifice, like, going out or, like, partying or doing stuff like that. But it's it's the, the connections with people. When you have to sacrifice that time, that can be difficult. And and we see that here. And, like, yeah, I mean, I, I've never done music. I know you've. I know you you've done music. You're an artist. You know what I mean. Like, but I I still re it still resonated with me as well. Yeah. You know? No. And, and like the metaphor, right? Like that. That's like that's, that's the most powerful thing here. This is why like Ram V really freaking really laid it all out there for us. Like you know the sacrifice and you know uh, everything with everything within Eric's life. Eric, who's the main character, by the way. Yeah. Um. Everything in Eric's life, it's like he describes it as mundane. Right, how he never really did anything, and you can see the resentment that he has for it. Right, he's like, "Fuck, I'm just a regular old dude." Like, you know, and it's it's really prevalent within the first like, two two chapters of this. But then, like, you know, upon discovery, okay. By the way, let, let, let's let's just give the synopsis. Okay, so Eric, the failed uh, the failed jazz musician, the the Saturday morning teacher, uh, his mother dies. Right, and uh, he's pretty much estranged from the family. Like, uh, he, he set himself apart. We, we, we come to find out why as the story progresses, but like, you know, it's everything dealing in the wake of the mother's funeral. Right. right. Which is crazy because like in the, in like in, in, in the early chapters, like you can see this guy's really fucking depressed, like oh, really yeah. bottom of the barrel. Like when you start getting poetic in your own thoughts, like that's how, you know, it's. You're, you're, you're getting to a dark place. You should probably chill out there, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in the wake, you know, he rediscovers people, and he's like, these people aren't important. Like, none of these people are important. Like, it's, it's crazy because you kind of kind of see the disconnect he has with his family, and you kind of like, especially with his mom, which is kind of sad because it's like, you know, no, no, one, no one should ever feel that way about their mother. Or, he's just or, sad. Like yeah. he's just very. He's kind of like a depressing guy. Like it's yeah. not. It's. I wouldn't say that it's. I don't know if this is the wrong way to say it, but it's not fun to read him. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, it yeah, makes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not. I'm not saying it's. It's not entertaining it to very, read. But you feel bad, and you're just like, feeling, yeah. "Fuck, dude! Like, damn, this is kind of depressing a little bit." But I don't yeah. mind. I, I don't mind reading depressing stuff. Like that's not a problem. But then he finds that photograph, right? 
of yeah. that, you know, that late 60s jazz musician. And then we, like, the, like we literally are in Chapter 1. Chapter 2, we fucking transport to 1967. And we meet yeah. this other jazz musician and, like you said, the pale man, uh, which is kind yeah, of ironic. Yeah, that's what I'm calling him. That's what I'm calling him. I mean, because he's like the pale wanderer for the Swamp Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, okay. He kind of, like, there was one panel where I'm like, dude, that's a joker. Yeah. He literally you, know, you, know, you know what this reminds this me of? This art style reminds me of? It reminds me of Arkham Asylum. Dave McKean. Yeah. Yeah, McKean. Yeah. Dude, like, this is what this is what yeah. the art reminds me of. That's, the structure of the that's panel. a really good really you know? good comparison, actually, yeah. I would say more so than Bill Sienkiewicz. I would say Yeah. Because this is more psychedelic in its ways, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's a more cerebral type kind of art. But anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> Eric, Eric, like, you see how sad Eric really is. And man, Ron B really punches it. He punches the depression, like, and then the hallucinations. Like, okay, so the art, okay, this is the only thing that confused me about the art. I didn't know what was hallucination, and I didn't know what was actual solid. The, uh, the, the art is very atmospheric, you know what I mean? Yes. So, like, you know, in shots where it's the morning, it's very bright greens, yellows, you know, with hints of brown and reds. Like, it's very vibrant in the morning. But as soon as you hit the shadow, you hit a bad memory, right? It's it becomes this thing. Like it, this is a really emotional book. Like not an emotional where it's just like gonna sit there and make you cry, but it's definitely gonna make you feel things, whether it be via the writing or via the art, right? But uh, yeah, um, as we find out more about Eric, like we come to find out that uh, his mother was a jazz, was a fan of jazz, but like growing up, like she basically. Didn't praise, the, didn't praise him for how good he was or, like, really encouraged him or anything like that, right? It was almost kind of, like, forbidden. It's not, it, it felt like for him to be... That's what it felt like, too. Yeah. yeah. They, they never really confirm it, but they kind of allude to it, right? Like, kind of that whole thing with, like, parents disapproving of uh, their musician children, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like Lauren Hill in Sister Act 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. It's so good. It's so good. Right? And then, you know, and then you come to find out that her his mom was an avid jazz fan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super avid, crazy jazz fan. It be it's like uh, my homie Irvin, who I was in the hip hop group with, right? His father passed when uh like, while we were like while we were in the early parts of our recording and doing shows and all that. And when his father passed, he hits me up one night and he's like Dude, I just went through my dad's computer. He has a whole file of music that so says Urban's music. And I looked at it, and it's stuff dating all the way back to the stuff I had in high school. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, like, it's crazy. You know, then you realize that, you know, whether they disapprove or not, your, friend, your parents are always going to be your biggest fans, right? Mm -hmm. Like, whether, like, and they have their ways, you know? Yeah. They have their ways. Like, uh, you know, when my dad passed, my mom, uh, well, my mom told me a bunch of things. Like, yeah, you'd watch your music video. I, I walk in and like he'd be watching one of your music videos. I'm like, what? Why? He's like, oh, he's like, he's like, the production value is really good. <laughs> All right, that's something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. That's something, I guess. But um, you know, this is this this whole thing hit very close to home for me. Like, I mean, I've, I've never dabbled in jazz myself, but I mean, you know, music is music. Yeah, right? me, yeah, I agree. Music is music, and uh, but this is like a, my perfect love of like music and comic books all in one comic. I will say that. I will say that okay. this is this is e e without the supernatural stuff. This is one of my favorite. This is I, has become one of my favorite comics easily. You know, the supernatural stuff just added an element to it. You know, uh, I could I I felt like it. it I could have done it, without it, it. Yeah, I could have done without it. I could have yeah. done without it because. But the thing is, you're kind of without it anyway because most of the story is just self-discovery and self and like yeah. you know eric kind of finding himself that the the pale man and the whatever deal he makes that's a metaphor for every deal that like the, uh, the embodiment of every deal that musicians make like you know what i mean like you know we hear rappers like eminem and tech nine talk about like what their success has cost them like you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and you know same thing same thing with slug from atmosphere what his success costs him like you know what i mean trying to find a balance like there's but you know, like like I said, like without the supernatural stuff, this would have been this is this is still a fantastic. So this is a fantastic comic book. This is it's thought provoking. It's it's emotional. It's personal. You know, yeah, like, no, I, that's, 
it, that's what I like. You know what I mean? I like those stories with with those moments where you get into like the character. The only reason I said I feel like it could have been a little bit longer is because I felt like the ending was so abrupt. It's like it's like a it's like a jazz song. Yeah. You know? The structure, everything, everything about this is very emotion fueled. It's a jazz song. This whole thing is a jazz song. Like it starts yeah. off somber and slow. No, but uh, what do you call it? this? This this comic book, like in yeah. one sitting or like two sittings, like I did, is a jazz. Oh, you song. did it in two. Yeah, it's a jazz song. It's a literal jazz song, and you know it picks. It, it's it's like I said, it starts you off slow, and then it, and then it hits you with the highs and the lows, the really lows and the really highs, and then it comes to an abrupt stop, like boom, like you want more. Yeah, and you know, like if that's what he was going for. I, I felt it like this is a great this is a fantastic comic i like i think just the fact that uh, with our conversation and just our like you know sh- sharing our ideas on this like this bumped it from a four a four star uh, a four out of five to a five out of five for me it this is this is a fantastic comic book right down from the art from the lettering to the colors to the um to the writing like this is this is some amazing stuff uh so so was that his grandfather or his dad his grandfather okay his mother uh alana lafitte right was uh what do you call it was the daughter but but he didn't know okay all right and then i got i you know, i think this will benefit from another read i, yeah. I i'm gonna it, I and, read. And, like and also there's also some things that i find out when like i look at panels where they revisit panels right where it shows her it shows alana having like this crazy illustrious life at jazz bars but really she was just there to get to know her dad it wasn't like she was out partying. She was actually out there listening to the music, right? So, you know, it's, it's a crazy realization of the type of person that he he's always perceived her as. It's like this mean old monster that he literally did, like uh, separated himself and moved away to get away from them. And you know, it, it, I don't know. It's crazy. This is this is fucking. Yeah, awesome. it's. I mean, yeah, it's you know, like he he really plays with the supernatural element in terms of like. Okay, so he hooks up with that with that girl from like his past, right? Yeah. And that in and of itself was depressing. Even though he like he's hooking up with her, like he makes it a sad fucking moment. So like yeah. you said, it is like it's just one long jazz song. Depressing, depressing, and depressing. And not in a bad way, but they the re- there's a reason they call jazz the blues, right? Like yeah. because it has like a somberness to it. And Ron V leans into that and um even as Eric is getting something that like should make him happy he's sitting there like oh fuck it she's probably not gonna she's not gonna this wasn't about me this is about the music that i that she heard and then him going and he's like i have to i have to capture i have to capture the music i have to leave right now i can't wait right and then like when he's gone and like he's been gone longer than he thinks right because like it's so there's a little bit of that i think i was confused a little bit in that maybe like again i think i should read this a second time because the timelining yeah oh it's hopping around it's definitely hopping around no that i know but i'm saying for him like we get i know we go back in the 60s but like he's he doesn't realize he's been away for two weeks right when he starts getting the phone calls and they're like where are you and we never see him actually make this deal with the devil, but apparently this devil, or pale man, right, made the yeah. deal with his grandfather, and now he's making it with him. That, that was the only confusion for me, a little bit, was, mm-hmm. was that part. You know, the, the supernatural elements are sometimes where I got a little bit confused, but, I mean, like I said, like right here, look at this. That's the fucking Joker, dude. Yeah. Like, I want to see him do... That's one of my favorite splash pages, by the way. This, it's fucking dope. That, that, that's, that, that, that's one of the sickest things ever, dude. That yeah. I, I, I literally stopped for like a good five minutes to look at it. It was one of the best splash pages. I really like this page as well, where he's sitting in the chair and he's like grabbing. I mean, this, yeah, you know what? You're right. I, as, as I'm sitting here talking to you, it has love. It's jumped from yeah. four to a five because like it's. You're you're helping me realize stuff that I didn't really pick up the first time, or yeah. I, that I didn't pick out myself, and now I'm like going back thinking. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I think Rom V is just he. I mean, Lemire says it on the back of the cover that he has known that Rom V was one of the most was one of the next great comic writers for a while, and he proves it and then some with this project. You yeah, know? Yeah, no, this is 
This and is Anand RK's artwork is a total revelation. Together they make beautiful music, all wrapped in an amazingly cool Tom Mueller package. One of the best looking books and most moving comics you'll read this year. That's Jeff Lemire's quote. That's, I mean, you can't get higher praise than that. That's like one of the best quotes I think I've read on the back of a comic of all time. And, you know, not every quote is going to be some like really great statement, but I think he captures exactly what we're seeing, what we're yeah. getting from this book. And it's easy to see why this is on so many people's best of 20 in 2020. Yeah, this is, it's and beautiful. It's a, and it's a original it's, graphic novel. Like, yeah. this wasn't created in single-issue forms. Like, this is how we got it. There was no mm -hmm. other way to get this book. It just dropped. And you know what? It's rare when you get a fucking original graphic novel that's this thick and that fucking as hard as it did because people um, are skeptical. I mean, obviously so. You know what I mean? Like, this is, what is it, an $18 book yeah. for something you've never read before? Like, yeah. that could be a steep price. But, I mean, it was definitely worth it. And... Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I want to read it again now. I kind it's of beautiful. Yeah, it, it's a beautiful thing. I, I I could easily say I'm personally surprised. Like this is, I thought I was gonna like Graffiti's Wall better because Graffiti's Wall was pretty good. Like I, I like the anthology, the un anthology feel of it, right? But this this as a solid story, as I I want to read everything by Ron V now. I want to I want to see what other styles friggin' Anand R K can do. You know what I mean? This is. This is it. This is, this is why I love comics. This right here, it may, it, it it invokes so many kinds of different emotions, right? So many different emotions, and it was just real good stuff. Like even right down to art, the art is almost like there's a page in the back uh, with uh, some corkboard shots. Like you know, you know what artist corkboard is, where the artist puts like has a corkboard and he just puts up a bunch. I, I have one, and uh, right, it's right there. The cork board, all that stuff, yeah. or some art, or some stuff like that. And uh, right. there's, a, there's a shot of uh, Anand RK's cork board, and let's his cork board like shits on my sketchbook. <laughs> like, it's amazing. This is some <laughs> really cool stuff, dude. I it just makes me even more excited for everything we're getting from Ron V. Like, right. I feel like I'm reading so much of him lately. The more you know what I mean, like, yeah. he's writing Catwoman. He's writing yeah. the Justice League Dark backup. He's writing Swamp Thing. Now we read Blue and Green. We got another book. We got the Many Deaths of Layla Starr coming out. Um, yeah. It's already, I mean, he already posted on Facebook, too, that it's already sold out at the distributor level for the wow. first printing. And uh, it's going to go back for a second print, mm -hmm. which is kind of the new norm for anything by uh, Boom Studios at this point, right? It's... Mm -hmm. an, I mean, between actual fans and speculators... If a book, I, it surprises me if it doesn't sell out of the first printing. So, yeah. you know, uh, but yeah, I think that, like Lemire said, Rom B is becoming the, one of the next great writers in comic books. And I'm so glad that we're here at the beginning of it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, even though I know we're not at the very beginning, but like we're here in the earth, like as, as his name is getting bigger and we can help kind of like push our love for his work with this podcast you know what i yeah. mean or or our our time at the shop when we're working be like you guys need to check his stuff out it's really good because not enough people are talking about him still and i think it's just a matter of time i think it's just a matter of time become before he gets into that upper echelon of uh writers and comics yeah and no, an I'm, I'm glad that this was suggested to us yeah i'm really really glad uh, you know, I enjoyed his Justice League Dark. I enjoyed his Swamp Thing. We both enjoyed his Swamp Thing. His Catwoman, I've heard nothing but good praises. Uh, yeah, so going into this, reading Graffiti's Wall and re re reading Blue and Green, I, I want to know more. I, 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 I want to read it all. He's been yeah. fantastic. You know what I mean? I agree. I mean, he's got like this one book that he said that you can only get online because it's it's not like through Diamond. Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot the name of it. Oh, Black Mamba. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. So that there's that. There's the Savage Shores. That's from Vault. Also. Yeah. So like, and they all get really good ratings too. Like if you look on Goodreads, they're rated pretty high. So mm -hmm. and the Black Mamba is set in Mumbai, and it's a noir story. So like, you know how much I love. Uh, yeah. Noir, so Hell yeah. I, I definitely want to. I'm gonna buy it, and then I'll probably. I could probably let you borrow it or whatever. Oh, yeah. Next time we see each other, but 
yeah, this is an awesome book. I'm really glad we we fi- we finally did it. We've been talking about doing this one for weeks. I think it was really? supposed months, to be for months, dude. For months, we've been talking yeah. about this for months. It was supposed to be somewhere in the middle of where we were doing fables if we didn't like push fables all together. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, I no. highly recommend this book. I highly recommend anybody listening or watching to check out all of Rom V's stuff, especially Graffiti's Wall, because Ananda RK is on there, and we've been singing his praises with his art. It's a different art style in that book, but it's fucking dope. It's mm-hmm. it's really amazing, and they're a great creative team, and I hope that we continue to see more projects um, with them moving forward. Yeah, I 100% agree. I can't wait. This is this is great stuff. Um, I, like I said, uh, it it went from a four, four, a four out of five to a five out of five in a matter of a conversation. Just take this in. Take uh, like if you do read it, take it in. Take it in for what it is, for everything that it is. Man, I it's, it's a good jazz song. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. it's a fantastic jazz song, and you know, I feel like putting on some jazz while listening to it would really heighten change the experience. the experience, right? I feel like putting yeah. like to change to totally change the experience. But you know, if you're a jazz fan, I know people who are like. I did throw on some Grover Washington, bro. Fuck no, yeah. no, I know people who are like totally against like jazz or like non music with no lyrics. It's weird. It's a weird thing. I don't know. It's apparently so, a thing. I mean, I listen to film scores. Yeah, is, same. Is that weird? <laughs> same. No, I do too. I, I do too. I, I also I also listen to uh, video game like you know, fighting game music. <laughs> yeah. Like. Uh, uh, <laughs> This is like one of my favorite ones, but like it's Guile. No, no, uh, Guile from uh, Street Fighter Two, like the original. Yeah. Beep, yeah. Beep, beep, beep. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lauren only paints to fucking to fucking scores. All oh, her it. art is done to musical scores. She doesn't. That's tight. Yeah. That's super dope. Every time I do my 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 my. Uh, my sketches and, and like I, I do like a live for it. I always put uh, lo-fi hip hop in the background. Yeah, I mean, I would expect nothing less from yeah. from, from you with your art, some sort yeah. of hip hop. So yeah, exactly. It's yeah. all, all hip hop. Uh, I got a project that I'm probably gonna start today. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you after we record. But... Okay. All right. Anyway. Well, I mean, yeah. I think that that's all we got then for blue and green. Yeah. You got anything else you want to, I mean, I think we've kind of said it, right? I, I don't think we could, like, dive too much deeper into this or you kind of, like, going to ruin other people's experience. Yeah. But I hope you guys all check this out. Um, it's, uh, and, like, I guess, like Dylan said, I guess we're taking a break from doing Books of the Week uh, for a little bit. I don't know what we'll do instead of that. Um, I, are we going to We could always talk do? Invincible. We could always talk Falcon, Winter Soldier. Okay. Uh, Low-key starts soon. <laughs> I mean, we're coming up on our one uh, one year anniversary of doing oh this. God. Really? This is episode forty six, so there's only six oh, more wow. six before more we hit the year. Yeah. So obviously, episode fifty two, we'll just talk about. That'll be like a recap of the year. Um, yeah. But I don't yeah. know. I guess we'll, yeah. We'll fig- yeah, we'll figure out what we'll talk about next week throughout the week. I don't know. You you yeah. shoot me your idea. I'll shoot you my idea. But yeah. So, uh, like I said, like Dylan said, go check this out. It's a really dope book. And if you're not already following us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at The Comic Lounge. You can follow Dylan at The Dillbot on Instagram. Uh, Make sure you throw your comments or suggestions down below. Or you can also email us at comicloungepod at gmail.com. And make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds.